Hey folks, how's it going? Dr. Spin. Collecting gun reviews and general music of meanderings. This week I'm going to be taking a look at an album by The Thought Gang, an album called Modern Music. Now, if you know what The Thought Gang is, what brought you here, you definitely need to check out my Patreon below because this is a super niche recording. And if you like this, you might check out some of the other interesting stuff that I'm into. Uh, the Thought Gang is a collaboration between Angelo Badalamente and David Lynch, David Lynch, famous filmmaker. And this is sort of an extension of the 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 post that I made a couple of weeks ago that was devoted to Angelo Badalamenti and the Fire Walk Me soundtrack. And I think this is a really interesting extension of that, that recording. David Lynch and, and Angelo Badalamenti had gotten a really close collaborative relationship during the course of their time with Twin Peaks. And of course, their, their relationship actually dated before that to uh, Blue Velvet. It's the first time they kind of got together and started thinking about how to make music together. And they always clicked really well. They decided to take this one step further and not just make a movie soundtrack, but kind of collaborate on a, in a project together. And this is a very interesting step because you look at David Lynch and David Lynch kind of has is reputable as a filmmaker. But David Lynch, if not a musician, he would probably downplay the idea that he's a musician, although I think that he is, um, is definitely a lover of music and is certainly kind of a sound designer. He has a really clear idea uh, audibly about what he likes for things to sound like as much as he does visually. And that puts him in a very interesting role in this situation where he's almost like a producer or an idea guy for this for this project. And on the other hand, you have Angela Badalamenti, and Angela Badalamenti is an amazing uh, composer. And this would be a very clear extension of the kind of music they were doing in Twin Peaks. It's still kind of this 50s inspired jazz, but with this sort of weird fourth dimensional stuff floating through it. Not quite the classic idea of jazz, but definitely has its roots in that style. And the idea was to kind of get together with some top-notch Los Angeles players and make a spoken word jazz album was the concept. Like the night my girl went away, gone off in a world filled with stuff. Lights start changing and there's wires in the air and the asphalt man, the asphalt man is all around me and I look down. Far away from me, man, I can't believe it. I got a real indication of the laugh coming on. <laughs> Now, David Lynch's ideas about music are, are pretty broad and also very well defined. It's what the sounds that, that go into his movies come from his, his musical uh, interests. And although he has an aspect of his musical concept that kind of tends toward what would become dream pop later on, he also has this kind of uh, affinity for ambience and dark uh, soundscapes and that's really what this this recording focuses a lot on. The album is very improvisational but the improvisations are all cued by David Lynch's ideas. According to the session drummer on the album, Greg Brown, uh, David Lynch would come in and just sort of dictate these ideas, kind of give scenarios that were props for the musicians and then they would use these sort of ideas to, to create their improvisations. A very free jazz approach, not really going into it with any set ideas about harmonies or melodies, just these sort of pictures in David Lynch's mind. And if you look at that previous clip where Angelo Badalamenti recalls how David Lynch would would give him narratives and he would write music with those narratives, you could see how this this collaboration grew out of that that relationship between he and Angelo Badalamenti. So David Lynch is kind of responsible for cueing the musicians to create these jazz improvisations or these, you know, ambient soundscapes. But there are also some more solid concepts that he used going into these recordings. And he also provided the words and, and some of the music and also with the production. But Angelo Badalamenti really took care of interpreting these, um, these ideas for the musicians. He was a conduit through which David Lynch would, would communicate with the other musicians in the group. When it came time to, to render some of the lyrics that David Lynch had in mind, of course, he wanted to come at it with a person who's a very well-established singer. But Angelo Badalamenti had this really great concept and he really wanted to go for it. He's like, let me get it, give me a chance to do this. And David Lynch really didn't think that Angelo Badalamenti could do it. He's not known for being a great singer. But then Angelo went into the studio and just started spoken word ranting. And my mental image of what the results were for this recording are both pretty humorous and also marginally terrifying. According to rumor, uh, David Lynch actually had a hernia after listening to Angelo Benalamente doing what he was doing for this album for the first time because he was laughing so hard about it. He thought it was so entertaining and he felt like Angelo's timing was impeccable and it suited the recording so well that he just, he ran with it and put his trust in Angelo Badalamente as sort of the lead vocalist for these tracks. Like the men wearing suits racing lawnmowers. Men wearing suits racing lawnmowers. I said, the hot ash of cigarettes like the men wearing suits racing lawnmowers. It's America! And these dogs are winners. Stand black earth space 
Now, being that this recording was recorded around this, this kind of interim time, but a kind of important gestational time for Twin Peaks, I think that it stands to reason that this music is very closely connected to Twin Peaks music, and, and it is. If you watched my previous post on Fire Walk With Me, I talked a little bit about how you could create a Twin Peaks ensemble and with a certain kind of instrumentation, really do justice to a lot of those recordings. That same instrumentation bleeds over into this, this album, the Thought Gang Project. So if you believe, like I do, that the music of Twin Peaks is as important to Twin Peaks as anything else that happened, then this recording, I think, is an extension of that, and in my opinion, actually contributes to the t Twin Peaks canon. Sort of, in a way, kind of a lost, weird lost chapter in Twin Peaks history. Especially if you take a look at the subconscious way in which David Lynch constructs things for in all of his movies. The underlying consistency and the mythology that he uses, I think, justifies that, that idea. For example, take into account that this recording was made in 1992-1993. There's a track on here called Woodsmen and Fiery Ships. And the woodsmen, although they play a little bit of a role, of course, in Fire Walk With Me, if you kind of blink, you'll miss them, but they're there. Those icons are there. They play a very big role in Twin Peaks The Return, which was released in 2017, the year before this was actually released. That, to me, is a tribute to the consistency of the iconography that, that David Lynch uses. Even though in 1992, the woodsmen weren't playing a really big deal in those iterations of Twin Peaks, they were still there, laying in the background, and they would come to play a really big role again in The Return. And I think that, really, if you take a look at the Thought Gang album and the way that it was released... It kind of, in a way, should be considered part of the return, in my opinion. And the electric clock is grinding near near him. Several woodcutters from fiery ships are coming in his door. They are dressed in wool and are opening his drawers and his refrigerator. One of them runs his hand up and down Pete's walls, stopping now and then and laughing. They have discovered Pete and have him by the arms and going with them out under the orange tree. The Return was released in 2017, sometimes called Twin Peaks Season 3. And that recording had a soundtrack that, that kind of followed the, the tendencies of David Lynch's later work, which was to move away from having a soundtrack made strictly by one person and instead having a sort of a compiled soundtrack with a bunch of different um, artists curated specifically for that that soundtrack or for that, for that movie. And the Twin Peaks uh, third season had that going on with the soundtrack. And six months later, due to the increased interest in Twin Peaks, this this recording was released. And I really saw it as part of that, a part of the, the return. Almost like all of Angela Badalamente's missing cues from the return showed up in this, 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 um, this recording. And in many ways that fits because the Thought Gang recording is, is not a super fun or uplifting recording. It's dark. And it's almost horrific, and it's it's evoking, um, and that's very much like what was happening in Twin Peaks: The Return. If you watch The Return, of course, it's of the Twin Peaks series. It's really the darkest and most kind of flattest one, and it follows that that tone very closely. And I think that you know, the woodsman showing up in that, and 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 the other references that you have to David Lynch's iconography fits really well with what was happening. In the return, even though this album was made in the early 90s. But one of these tracks actually did show up on the return, the tune uh, Frank 2000. And it's sort of a dark ambient piece, only a, sl a sliver of it was used in the, in the actual show. But the cue for this was this whole thing about uh, there's a dark bar out in the desert somewhere and these guys are going to go get out and get beat up in the desert by these, you know, hoodlums or whatever. And that's never explicitly stated in this, but the cue for that kicked off this very dark, uh, ambient improvisation that just descends slowly into like free jazz chaos. One of the things that's most compelling to me about Twin Peaks and David Lynch's work in general is that David Lynch requires the listener or the viewer to take part in meaning making. Um, and it's what makes it so alluring and so um, also so kind of so frustrating because David Lynch never gives answers to anything. He's always asking questions. He's always kind of putting things out there, abstract concepts and ideas, and he 
forces the listener or the viewer to connect the dots. But again, it feels like there's this structure to what he does. There's a consistency to it. And this is this iconography I've talked about of David Lynch's where you have certain things that pop up in his in Twin Peaks and in his movies and they seem to all belong to the same universe and they seem to all have sort of consistent meanings from one movie to the next, even though this is never stated explicitly. Of course, if you watch Twin Peaks, it, because it happens in a structure of a, of a longer narrative, some of these things get fleshed out. As a matter of fact, some of these things get fleshed out uh, in the season two of Twin Peaks when David Lynch had left the show. People start trying to connect the dots on, on things, and then whenever David Lynch came back to the return, he picked them up, like the, the, the Twin Peaks ring, ring with, the, with the rune on it. Um, that was something that was not his creation, but he picked it up and ran with it in the return. The consistency of these ideas from one thing to the next in David Lynch's work is one of its most compelling things. And I think there's an aspect of that that shows up here. In Twin Peaks, part of the mythology is you have this thing called the Black Lodge. And it's this sort of nether dimensional waiting space where these creatures, benevolent sometimes and sometimes um, uh, ominous, live out their existence and sort of interact in, in bizarre ways with, with human beings. And one of the ways in which creatures from the Black Lodge interact with people in the regular world is through electricity. This was hinted at throughout Twin Peaks, but really made explicit in The Return. And where specifically you see like creatures traveling through electrical lines. You don't, again, they never say it totally out loud, but they, they, they hint at it enough that the viewer can pull that meaning out of it. And I think that particular thing shows up on this recording, Angelo Badalamente's vocal recordings, almost all of them on this. It has this weird distorted quality, like he's speaking through a megaphone or it's like scratchy and distorted. Uh, the one track on here that's not him singing is the song Jack Pace the Red. That's uh, David Lynch's voice kind of pitch shifted. But even that one has this kind of megaphone quality to it. And to me personally, that situates Angelo Badalamente as a Black Lodge character trying to communicate with us, the listener, through electricity. And that electricity of course, is being the recordings that we're listening to, but also just the, the way that his voice sounds electrified, clearly made more electrical by distortion and, and through, um, through studio manipulation. I think that's one aspect of this recording that fits extremely well with David Lynch's already present um, you know, mythology that goes along with Twin Peaks and also makes this recording very real. It's almost like a secret message from the Black Lodge uh, aimed at people who are the most dedicated viewers. And again, I really think this album is super fascinating. It's not for everyone. And certainly when you get to songs like um, uh, A Meaningless Conversation where uh, Angelo Badalamenti is just kind of blabbering nonsense and the whole group is just putting this big ponderous chomp, 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 chomp. It just kind of, kind of jumps the shark at that point. It's, it's not a super fun listen, but as a statement, it's really compelling. As an appendix to Twin Peaks, I think it's really, really fascinating. And as a sort of a, an extension of David Lynch's ideas and the way that he conducts things, both visually and audibly, it's a real interesting listen for fans of, of him and his interactions with Angel Badalamenti. Um, and if you're one of those folks, definitely it's worth checking it out. But that's what I'm going to say about it for this week. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, share it out with your friends. Also, follow me over on Spotify. I'm going to put a Thought Gang track up over there. And please look down in the comments for a link to my Patreon page. I'm in the process of doing my top 20 of 2023. And I have a viewer's bracket. And your subscription to Patreon will include your voice in the viewer's bracket. So please check that out if you have the opportunity. And until you see you next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.